Hello everybody, uh, I'm Jim, welcome to another video. Um, again, another one on site today, uh, welcome. I'm uh, currently at a holiday let, tucked away down here in glorious Cornwall to uh, have a look at an internet issue and also to bring the kit up to date. Uh, the kit here currently was an old Netgear router with a Netgear wireless extender. Not the best thing in the world anymore. Uh, I put the kit in, God eight plus years ago to serve this holiday let. Uh, unfortunately, it appears to have failed finally. Um, I think it's probably been taken out by a power surge or something. It doesn't appear to want to turn on anymore. So I got a shout to say, come fix, please. So we thought, what a perfect opportunity to put a dream machine in. So I'm going to do a quick run through and a review. Um, this is the first actual dream machine I've ever used. Uh, we've used plenty of dream machine pros and uh, obviously ubiquity kit everywhere else. So we're going with a dream machine and to go with it, a Flex HD to uh, act as a mesh point to uh, relay around the house. So uh, I'm gonna uh, go for a quick unboxing of the dream machine, as I say, my first hands-on experience of, and I will give you my opinion of such device. Right, let me get you set up and uh, we'll go from there. Now, now just as a precursor to this, currently I've just removed this wonderful old net gear here that has died from this location here where it is plugged into this phone socket here obviously we're in the uk so uh we have an adsl connection here i've unplugged at the moment with a micro filter on it but this box here for those who are not in the uk this is not a bt master socket it's an extension that goes all the way over the door and all the way down and goes into the bottom of said master socket. So for this, to save having this extension cable causing problems, which they tend to do, we will be mounting a new modem this side with a cable uh, gonna have to unfortunately because the nearest power sockets are over here um, and the dream machine is a bit big and I'm not gonna sit it on the floor down there. I'm going to mount the new modem for the dream machine because the dream machine is only got a WAN port on it. The modem will be mounted here with a cable going all the way up over there and all the way down over to here. Down to over here, we'll get rid of this socket here and get rid of it off the wall. And then we will mount the dream machine here, dead phone, and go from there. So I'm going to get go back over and get the dream machine unboxed with you guys and get it set up and go from there. Now, I do apologize that uh, this isn't going to be the most refined video, but I'm on customer site. So Flex HD, Dream Machine. Also for the uh, site, we have a Draytech 166. Uh, this is their GFast and VDSL2 modem. So this is what we'll be using to provide a modem solution here. Uh, unfortunately, the Unify range has no options for that currently one day maybe we might get a uh, ubiquity modem but until then so draytech solid simple probably one of the best modems on the market whether you go for a 166 or a 130 i think there might be a 132 out now i'm not sure i haven't looked for a bit but these are our default go-to modem so pass through pppoe authentication and uh, these are also approved if you're in the UK with a BT specific firmware. So highly recommend these. First one of these, we've used these before. So put that out of the way. Again, I'm going to be doing this one handed a bit because obviously this hand has the camera in it. So quite simple, nothing particularly interesting on the box other than it's saying obviously dream machine information on the bottom. Um, we've used plenty of the Dream Machines, uh, or Dream Machine Pros, I should say. So you will have to excuse me while I open this up. He says, I don't have my Leatherman to hand at the moment. So just pop the film off. There we go. It's that new. This isn't a, oh, I've unboxed it before and know exactly what's inside it because I don't. I've never used one of these before. This is an experience I have read through all the good, the bad, the ugly. On these, get 
bit of that out of the way, and here we go. So this is my first unboxing of a Dream Machine. Ubiquity going for the very Apple-esque look. And there it is. Nothing else in the box. Nope. Okay, so put that down there. Dream Machine. Reasonable amount of weight to it. So obviously on the back, we have got the four port switch, non PoE, WAN port power cable. Not a lot else on the base, a couple of vents, obviously restart, factory reset button, and all the other fun and games from Unify. Let's have a look what else we've got in the box. So we've got the cup which it sits in. We have got the standard package of information, a UK power lead, and that's it. Simple, I won't say concise, but nothing more than you need. Put all that back together, put that down there. Dream Machine. Again, first impressions, sensible weight. It's a fairly stylish looking thing, actually, considering what most home routers look like. And although this is a unified piece of hardware, the majority of these I expect will be used in homes. Um, Primarily because obviously the Dream Machine Pro makes a bit more sense for business. But that's not to say that this cannot be used in a small business. It's still a unified piece of hardware. It's still got the unified network controller built into it. It's got an access point built into it, which is why we've chosen it for here. Because we need an access point, obviously, to cover the bulk of the house. And we also have a mesh or a meshed unit that will be, which is the Flex HD, which I'll unbox in a second. But that is the simple idea. We'll get that fired up in a second. Let's unbox the Flex HD. Again, as you can see, excuse the screwdriver, but I just need to pop through the Gosh, darn it. Try not to swear. Excuse me while I zoom in. I don't have my knife to hand, which is a bit annoying. There we go. And we'll just undo the cellophane wrapping. Again, we've used these before, but if you have not, these are a very stylish alternative to the standard Unify dish access points. Um, I do believe that the what will become the Wi-Fi 6 mesh access point, which is currently in early access in the States. Sadly, we haven't got it over here yet. There we go. Um, is going to use this design which will be interesting um, but there we go so this is the flex hd obviously there is the access point pop that out put that there for the minute comes with a poe injector this is the not to be confused this is an af injector not to be confused with the 24 volt injectors or the 48 volt injectors that are passive it looks very similar but if you have a Unify injector, before you plug anything in, always check this point here, because it will tell you what voltage it is. And if all for that fails, then round the back, that way, it will also tell you on the back, I believe it's, hold on, you'll have to excuse the camera. There, there you go, output 48 volts. So be aware, not, all Ubiquiti PoE injectors are the same. Um, 
generally the small black ones are 24 volt, the small white ones are often 24 volt passive. Do not plug them into non-passive kit. It can make it go bang. So there we go. Uh, that we are going to need. Um, behind the magic slot is a power lead for the injector. Now, typically, I'm in the UK. That's a European lead, so I will need to swap the lead out. Not to worry. Book of words. Leaflet that comes with going how to set this up. One, plug it into a switch or injector. Two, normal Unify. Ooh, second stick of words that says, oh, how to wall mount it. Interestingly, if you've never used one of these before, these use the same mounting system as the G3 Flex Unify Protect cameras. So that looks similar. It's because it's the same as a G3 Flex camera. There's the, the actual mount that sits on. Like so. And then that. Oh, I should take off its shiny cover. Actually there, you will see it has the base on it. Turn it upside down. Pops off. That is the base. And you can mount this to the wall externally, I believe, as well. I do believe these are water resistant. And you can mount it on the wall like so. So these are quite a flexible, they are a very stylish looking access point. It's got the screw holes in the bottom for securing it. And obviously the LED to tell you what it's doing is sat on the top. As per norm, Unify cable ties, always useful, got boxes of them and there's the screw pack, but that's it. So there you go. Unify Flex HD, Unify Dream Machine, Unify PoE injector for scale. Very stylish looking, very interesting. I'm now gonna get this powered up, connected up, and we'll run through the setup because um, I'm gonna actually probably set this up using the mobile phone app because why not? Right, catch you in a second. Right, we're all powered up now, as you can see by the lovely white lights on everything. Uh, because all Dream Machines, in fact, I believe the Dream Machine, the Dream Machine Pro, and the Cloud Key Gen 2, Gen 2 Plus, now require a WAN connection. I have connected the WAN, which goes snaking across the floor at the moment over to a modem into the phone socket over there, which has its master socket, uh, engineer socket uncovered uh, just to eliminate any extension leads. But uh, as you can see, unlike a lot of places, this is a live environment. This is not a lab environment. This is not a test environment. This is actually on site. So I have now powered everything up and on firing the network app up for Ubiquiti, the first thing that it does is go, there's a new dream machine, quite literally. So set up, let's see what it does. I have go add. Is it going to work? Oh, there we go. Connecting, and we get a blue flashing light on the Dream Machine. Connecting, connecting to internet. So I need to go for other connection options because it is a UK PPPoE, and because this is BT, it is. If you are using the one of these to replace a BT home hub with a modem, it is normally this one works a BT home hub at BT connect. 
one. There is another one which is green light at something or other, but this one normally works. And the password can be anything you like. One, two, three, four. Let's make sure that connects. And go. Oh, is that going to work? Let's find out. Did that work or did that just go back? See, this is live. The joys of live experimenting. Did that save? Yes, it did. Don't need to clone that. Save that. It didn't save. So we'll save that now. Let's see if that connects. Oh, no internet connection. Just double check our settings, BT Home Hub at btconnect.com. We'll just try the other one, which is BT Broadband. Save that. See if we get anything with that. We genuinely might not even get a connection as it could be that we have a line fault here as well, which might be one of the reasons why the uh, Netgear blew up. That's all fine. BT Home Hub at btbroadband.com. Password doesn't matter. Well, let's go with 8.8.8. .8 .8. Oh, the five stuck in there. Get rid of the five. 8.8. .8. Save that just in case. Well, it doesn't look like I have an internet connection, so you may have to excuse me for a minute while I get an internet connection up and running here. And we're back. After much coaxing, um, some playing around, lots of stressing, lots of swearing, and uh, multiple modems, etc., etc., it turns out that the Draytech Vigor 166 is not happy with ADSL connections. VDSL, fine. GFAST, fine. ADSL, on the other hand, there appears to be either a bug in the firmware or something not right. But if you have an ADSL connection, I would suggest sticking with the Draytech 130 for now. And um, yes, stressful. Anyway, uh, I have connected the internet up now finally using a slightly different method involving a router, but it works. So what we will now do is go next. And uh, I will set up the dream machine for where I am. Oh, there's a problem while connecting to the device. Well, there obviously isn't because you're obviously working. Let's retry. And uh, let's give this its name. where I've been taking so long and let's see if it will work. Uh, I already have an account uh, because we will be managing this. This will be set up to us. Excuse me while I come back in a minute after this is all set up. Well, another thing we have learned is that if your mobile device you're setting it up on does not have an internet connection, you also cannot set up a Dream Machine or a Dream Machine Pro. So uh, we are going to turn auto optimize off because we're not crazy. And while I set this up, let me get this configured. probably have this all blurred out just to be sure it's only going to be set up basically anyway because I will tweak it offward afterwards uh, we do auto update because actually I found it works quite well now primarily because uh, from a security side you want your devices like this 
to be as up to date as possible. I know, some people will uh, be screaming now. Wow, look at the speeds. Welcome to Cornwall on um, ADSL2. Supposedly, we had a line sync at around 20 meg. And a 1 meg upload. Amazing. Wow. Not what I expect, but we'll look into better internet here soon. Uh, okay, correct the location. Again, this is one of the problems. If you don't have access to the internet, it doesn't know where to put you. And all I want to do is tell it we're in the UK. Quick interruption. Device is updating itself. Expected. The uh, Dream Machine Pro does this also. I expected no less, but uh, there we go. Okay, we're up and running finally. I'll. Uh, Probably do a uh, outro to this, explaining some of the quirks that we found with this kit. But uh, anyway, <sighs> that blue intermittent flashing light is one of them. But it is working fine. I have a suspicion that's relating to the Bluetooth, but we'll find out at some point. Anyway, time to connect the Flex HD, which it has picked up wirelessly. I've not actually had this be very successful in the past, so I'm going to try it. As you can see, it's on a very random firmware revision. Let's adopt and see if it will do a wireless adopt because this will be a wireless point. Pending adoption. I'm pressing the magic adopt button. Is it going to work? This hasn't been the most successful thing recently, although I do believe the newer firmwares have made it more solid. If all else fails, I will adopt via, oh, there we go. Again, one of the wonderful quirks. Let's go next. Adopting device. I'm gonna turn blue. Can we have a blue light, please? We have a blue light. So wireless adoption is working. And we still have an intermittent blue flashing light. Get to the bottom of that. Anyway, right, let's go back to the dashboard. Go back to devices. Unit is getting ready. So I'm gonna do that, update the firmware, and then I'll come back. Dream machine in place. Slightly loose cable, but I need to come back because I have to swap a modem and do some tidying up. And unfortunately, the only cable I had with me at the time was purple, which doesn't really match the colouring. But hey, uh, anyway, I will do a quick outro to this in a bit once I uh, get around to it and uh, give some uh, pros, cons, etc., etc., on this dream machine. Overall, just a quick summary now, it seems to be actually very very easy to set up simple so long as there are a few caveats around that but i will go through that but uh so far seems to be behaving flex hd is uh sat out the way doing its job and uh, other than that all good so uh i will hand over to myself giving me a, giving you guys a full rundown on this well everyone it's the following day back home haircut and uh, time to summarize the dream machine overall quite impressed with the box no problems with it really the majority of the issues i had on site were in relation to it 
uh, not being a very easy site to get internet at. It's currently on ADSL and the uh, Draytech I have with me, although functioning on ADSL, would not connect. It's one of those things. Uh, those That particular Draytech doesn't like ADSL. Yay, it happens. Anyway, the Dream Machine itself, no problems with it really. F few frustrations, mostly around the fact that the site had poor internet connectivity. I had no mobile signal down there. Some certain areas down here in Cornwall where you don't get mobile signal still. Yes, in the UK there are areas with no mobile signal. That is one. So a uh, bit of faffing around and getting things sorted. But actually as a device, no, no particular problems with it. It's set up, ran through the wizard on the phone. It's what it does. It, it does exactly what you ubiquity say it does. Um, can't actually fault the device. It's in, it's working, it's behaving itself. It has a Flex HD as a mesh point hanging off of it. It's been operating quite happily. No issues with it. Uh, be going back to site to transition them over from ADSL to VDSL uh, in a few weeks' time, hopefully. And job done. So overall, I have no issue with using Unified Dream Machines. We don't have any issues with our Dream Machine Pros. They've been on sites quite happily working that was the first dream machine we've ever installed and again it's just like a dream machine pro but a bit smaller and saves on one access point if you are looking at uh, buying a dream machine for your business for your home nothing wrong with the device you do however need to be aware of the limitations of the device it is a single WAN device it does not have poe those are the glaring limitations of that device. But that's, it's not designed to be used as the center of a big network. If you have a small network in a business that just requires a router with wireless, job done. No other issues with it. It's going to say it will sit where it is. It's in a holiday let. That's ideal situation for that sort of device no needing to have an external controller no needing to have any sort of uh, bits hanging off of it in addition to switches etc 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 it's just going to work so quite happy to recommend them we will use them as and where we require them but you do need to be aware if you are setting one up you need internet access to set it up you need to be aware that it is limited in what it actually can do as a device and you need to know exactly why you're installing it. There's no point installing that sort of device in a place and then going back and complaining, which unfortunately some people have been doing, is that it's a limited device. It has a targeted uh, audience, perfect location for where it needs to be. Small business, home, simple, basic networking. So anyway that's my take on it quite happy to use them as with any of the unify kit you just need to be aware of what it is aimed at they are a very flexible piece of equipment but the actual ecosystem of unify again has a limit but it is so flexible we use it and we're happy to recommend it if this has been useful to you please do like subscribe comment uh, trying to obviously uh, spend a bit more time doing some videos. It's difficult at the moment just with the amount of work we're doing. Um, if you are in the uh, UK and you are looking for any sort of IT support, whether it be setting up Unify equipment, um, Sophos, uh, networks, etc., Windows, the, the, the Office 365, anything like that, please do get in touch with us uh, over at uh, Influx Solutions, links below, and uh, hopefully catch you again in the next video. Many thanks.